Um, it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker. Uh, today we have Carlos Carrasquillo. He encouraged me to roll my R there. So Carlos Carrasquillo, who is the studio director for a very uh, prominent and um, very avant-garde and really well-known in uh, Southern California architectural firm called Wolcott Architecture. They do some of the biggest names and the coolest spaces uh, that you'll find in uh, Los Angeles, which is certainly saying something. Uh, so Carlos is the studio director. Uh, he's been, uh, he has over 18 years of experience in designing award-winning buildings and interior spaces for various market sectors. His extensive design expertise and industry knowledge extends to all project phases from initial programming through construction administration. He got his uh, degree in architecture uh, from uh, the great school of the uh, University of Wisconsin. And in his career, he has made many notable professional contribution uh, contributions during his tenures at numerous prominent design firms. So, Carlos, thank you so much for being with us. I think, Nicole, if you stop your share, Carlos can bring his presentation on, and he'll be sharing his uh, insights on uh, all things architecture. Uh, take it away, Carlos. Thanks, David. Let me, uh, let me set this up here in one second. So let me know if you guys can see the screen. We do see that. Perfect. Uh, you see the W, right? I have three screens on this side. Yep, it's your uh, sketched. Perfect. So uh, thanks for having me, uh, everyone. Uh, hopefully the time I spend here and the things I go over uh, will be a benefit to, uh, to most of you, uh, if not all. Um, I want to put a quick disclaimer out. I, I think my presentation is going to have a, a different edge and a different uh, vantage point than, than what you've been seeing mostly today and we'll see for the rest of the day. I, I caught the, the tail end of, of the one that was just happening now. Um, and I think mine's going to be a lot more high level uh, and not very specific to certain items, more of a, a description of, of how I see the world in its current form at this current moment. So just a quick disclaimer uh, before I start jumping in here. So as I jump in, uh, I, I think one of the first things I want to do is, is, is talk a bit about myself so you know where I'm coming from. You, you know kind of the experiences that I've had and why I view the, the world the way I do. And the first thing you should know about me is I'm, I'm quite cynical about uh, my approach to, to people, my approach to life, my, my approach to situations. Um, but right now, being a cynic uh, isn't really what I want to do because there, there's too much happening and it's too easy to, to be that. So for the time being, I'm, I'm a, a cynical optimist. Um, so, so a lot of what I talk about today is going to be based around, around that idea. Um, and if I talk a little bit about myself, uh, David started to, to say a little bit about who I am, but, but in a bit of a more detailed fashion. I'm, I'm a partner at Walcott. Uh, one of three partners in this firm. We're, we're an LA-based firm, roughly 45 years in the business. Our focus is predominantly on workplace. So, so we really know the office well. We really know the trends that are happening. We really know where things are going as much as anyone knows at this point in time. So that, that's really my expertise, if you will. I, I know a good portion of, of what's happening today is based around education. Um, and, and uh, I, I have good insight in education, being that I'm married to a, a sixth grade teacher uh, and I have a 12 year old daughter. So, so I'm really seeing how they're operating and, and how they're negotiating the, the new world we live in. Um, personally, I, I've been in the business 20 years, uh, again, predominantly in workplace. So, so, so just a really strong foundation in that. I'm an army brat. So I grew up moving every three years. I, when I was doing this and, and starting to do it, I actually had to reach out to my sister to understand the beginning of my life. She's an older sister. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, I realized that on average, I lived in one particular place for 1.8 years. So, so when, when my interactions occur with people, it comes from, from that experience where I had to, at a very young age, understand how to, how to approach certain groups quickly how to insert myself in certain groups and how to try and get a good read on people. So, so a lot of what I do and a lot of how I operate is based on that background. Um, and again, I have a 12 year old daughter. So the world that we're living in right now, it, it does me no good to sit back and sulk and, and, and approach it in a very cynical way. 
So the presentation today is going to be predominantly half class full scenario, right? Because because I almost have to operate in that capacity uh, for the benefit of my daughter and and for what I'm doing. So. Hopefully the cynic in me doesn't start to creep in as I'm talking uh, and, and I don't bum you guys out. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try really hard to stay in the positive realm of, of where things are. So with, within that little snippet of, of who, who I am as, as Carlos, the, the, the guy that's going to talk to you for the next hour, uh, I, I just want you to understand those kind of little snippets in those key moments, right? Because as, as we start to talk about it and, and we have high level conversations, to me, it's always about perspective. We can be in the same exact space talking about the same exact thing, but it really is about where you choose to locate yourself within that space so that uh, your everything you talk about comes from that point of view, right? So we can be talking about the same thing. You can have a completely different opinion to my opinion, um, but it's, it's, really, it's really important to me that you understand a little bit about me before I start to jump in which I'm going to do right now. So as we start to look at this, you know, 2020, what a year. It's, it, it's, it's, it's an understatement to say that this year has been full of, of quite a bit of activities, right? We start to think about last year and, and I think things like the Game of Thrones finale that we all invested our, our emotion into was a big deal. If, if that were to happen now, it, no one would care, right? Because if, if we start to go down the list, we've had, the Australian fires in, in America, there was an impeachment. Um, the Black Lives Matter went global. You know, it, it's it's completely something that that uh, I don't think any of us had ever seen. Uh, I we live in California. I'm, I'm coming to you live from LA. The California fires were just massive. It, it it was something that almost looked apocalyptic to us, and and not even to mention where we're headed here in a couple of weeks. You know where where the country could stand. So, so it's been a, a, an extremely, extremely nutty year. Um, and I think we're all having to, to adjust to, to how things are happening. So within all of that, um, COVID has been the king of this year, right? It, it, it's really been what marks an already busy, somewhat chaotic, somewhat uh, year full, full, of, full of a lot of activity. Um, it really has been the one that's that's taken over, right? We, we've had to deal with a quarantine, a global quarantine, not not something that some people on TV are dealing with. It's 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 everyone across the board. Um, so what has this resulted in, right? It's resulted in in a lot of fear, right? Uh, a lot a lot of, a lot of lack of confidence because we don't really know what's happening. We don't really know what tomorrow is going to bring. So so it's it's been confusing. Our economy has just been uh, <laughs> torn apart, and not just our economy, everyone's economy. So it, it really has turned our world upside down. Th this COVID, um, and how how do we how do we interact with with people moving forward? How, how do we design our environments moving forward? How, how do we create technology that responds to this? Is is something that that before we we could get into focus groups and 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 rationalize and work off of life experiences. Now we have to actually work off of one particular element. Um, so it's, it's, it's thrown us into a bit of chaos, right? And as a result of that, what, what in my opinion has happened is that we've gone from zero to 100 uh, really, really quick. So we're, we're stuck in a position where we're making a lot of reactionary decisions, a, a lot of decisions that I think a lot of what we've, where we are right now, we were started to head there but we really had to jump the gun. So as a result of that, you have people making these big proclamations and, and making these larger than life statements about where things are headed, right? Um, so for, for us in our company, again, we, we deal quite a bit with the workplace and, and, and that aspect of business. The office is dead, right? Is all we keep hearing. The office is dead. Everyone's gonna work from home. Uh, no one's gonna come back to the office. Uh, it, like, Companies are going to start, you know, moving away from downtown areas. They're going to go into the suburbs, which, which there's some truth to that. But this idea that we're all going to live and work from the same place, I, I think, is a bit of, of a reaction. And it's a fair reaction, right? It's, it's again, very chaotic times, like I said. But uh, I, I really want to encourage people to stop for a second, take a breath, relax. Um, let's 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 analyze the situation and then proactively start to do things the right way versus purely in a reactionary mode, right? So I, I think it's really important that 
you know, at the point where we're in now, where we're probably we're coming up on November, this started in March. I, I think it's a time to really reflect and be smart. As we as as we're moving forward, uh, this quote I, I pulled from Fast Company. It's it's over a year old of a quote, mind you, but I still think it's relevant. And it says workplaces that facilitate more frequent and higher quality contact with others have been shown to have improved communication and collaboration on tasks, job satisfaction and social support. Right. So, so this is only one year ago. So, so one year ago, we were all talking about how incredible uh, the design of offices have become, how, how thoughtful, how they were just becoming these cultural experiences for people. And now all of a sudden we're saying the office is dead and we're all going to start working from home. So uh, it, it's, it's based on the society that we live in, that, that we live in a clickbait culture, right? So we're on a 24-hour news cycle, as we, as we all extremely know uh, at this moment in time. The headlines are what tries to grab people, and it's, it's, it's how a lot of our information is, is delivered to us, right? So these larger-than-life statements of, you know, no one's going to work back and no one's going to go back to the office, really is what a lot of people are using to sell things. But I, I think if you get beyond a lot of these headlines and you start to read these articles, you'll see that it's a more common sense approach that's really what's happening. Um, and, and I wanna talk about that at, at some point here in the next hour. Um, but within that framework and within that, that moment in time that we're all living in, uh, I'm being the optimist here uh, and, and I'm removing my, my cynic uh, and I'm saying, let's, let's just take a second here and, and really think about this in a more rational fashion. So I, I think to do that in, in a somewhat organized fashion, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be pretty succinct here about, about this topic. I, I wanna talk about where the workplace is gone where it's where where we are now um, and where it's going in the future, and and I think something and again this isn't I'm very uh, workplace specific but I think in generalities this applies to education this applies to our our uh, personal relationships this applies to how we how we shop uh, 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 for our goods all of this is is changing in the same way that that our office space is changing so. In the most general terms, again, I, I hope this this doesn't put off the people that are strictly education based, because I think a lot of these lessons learned are, are purely global lessons um, that apply across the board. So, this this idea of evolution and, and things ever changing, things ever improving, uh, is something that's always happened with the office space. Uh, it, it's not unique. I, I know that at this moment in time, it feels like very jarring and, and something that that we all feel. Uh, is, is, is something that we can't handle, but, but we have to really think about the fact that this isn't the first time this has happened. If, if we think about the office as, as, as this particular item, let's say, where did the office really start? Well, uh, we, we know that, that a lot of business in this country started on this idea of mom and pops. It, it was coming from Europe, very art, artisanal based. Um, and then the railroads came and kind of upended all of that. Uh, the, railroad, the railroads were the first industry to really expand and, and, and require the expansion just based on what it was, right? It's, it's literally linking the country, but it became a decentralized uh, way of operating. So you could no longer just have one small operation on the East Coast. Uh, you needed to spread that ac across the country. Um, and, and what in the country at the time was really uh, at the forefront of everything was, was our factory system. So, so this idea of, of taking what's successful and, and implementing that into the, into the office space is something that was kind of a no-brainer. So this idea of the factory floor making its way into the business office and becoming the model that, that the office mimicked uh, was something that, that was, um, it, again, it made sense. It, it, it was just a natural progression. Those environments were really based on uh, the scientific management method, which is really be as efficient as humanly possible, make as much money as possible. Um, and, and it's not really about the person as much as what they're producing. So, so what you see here on the screen is, is kind of a quick snapshot of, you had your boss sit, that sat behind you. Everyone was lined up just like they were in the factory. Again, you, you, you didn't create one product as a whole, you created a part of that product, right? You were a typist. Uh, you were someone that put, put uh, paper in envelopes and sent it out. That's all you did all day long. Um, so World War II comes along and completely changes all of that, right? Because now our efforts are geared towards the war. Um, and it, it really mandated that people started to create 
material goods for, for the war. So, so all of this starts to change. The war ends, uh, uh, thankfully, um, and people come back home. And, and what we find is there's this, this really pent up demand for, for consumer goods. Um, so what ends up happening is that you can make more money in a factory producing goods than you can in an office. At that point, people that are running offices and their businesses are solely focused on the office realize, hey, we, we have to create environments uh, that are a lot nicer than these factory models because we have to entice people to come and work for us because we can't solve this issue solely with money. Makes sense, right? So, so we get to a point where we create this, these, these cubes, right? The, these cubicles. Um, and, and honestly, I, I'm, I include myself in this. We all look at cube, uh, uh, cubicle farms that are designed in the 80s and we think, well, oh, that's horrible. I would hate to work there. I couldn't do it. But if you put it within context, you have to realize that that, that environment uh, was a reaction to pulling people away from, from factories and, and, and letting them know that we're not going to treat you like factory workers anymore. So if, if you think about going from, from the factory setup to the cube farm, it, it's actually an incredible thing. I, I mean, it, it's, it's, we even talk about things like carpet as a given. Offices weren't even carpeted back in the factory era, right? This is something that really wanted to improve the quality of the life of the worker. So, so as an evolution, it's a pretty stark, dramatic difference from the factory model uh, uh, to the cube farm, I call it. But, but we all know it's, it's probably more offices from like the 60s uh, to the 80s within that realm. Um, but it's, it's, it's a very major shift that we don't really give it credit for, right? Because it happened on its natural path and it evolved at a somewhat gradual pace. Um, and we, we were all comfortable with it. We did, it didn't happen you know, from, from the middle of March to the beginning of April, uh, but it did happen. Another shift occurred, right? And it became the, the more open office. So this idea of hierarchy, this idea of bosses working in corner offices, having their own private pantry that, that no one else can touch, um, started to go away. Uh, and, and we have this system that it, it's, 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 I would call it current. Um, I, I still think it's, it's a bit half and half now, but this idea of, of an extremely amenity centric uh, environment that is a night and day difference from the factory. Uh, and, and, and I still think a night and day difference from what we call the cube farm environment. So, so this is what I think it really started in the nineties. And a lot of us are used to seeing a lot of us are, are, are not extremely happy about this idea of, of not having personal space. Um, and, 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 one of the big motives for this was, was really uh, densifying, right? Getting as many people into a space as possible, but a huge shift, right? So if, if we take it uh, for what it is, we, we have to think about the evolution of the office and things changing and it, be, it being okay and the world not falling apart around us because we had this big change that, that we couldn't really manage. Um, and I even think what we're transitioning into now is what I call the really open office. Um, so it's this idea that, that the office isn't once, it's, it's not your workspace that's a lot smaller than it used to be, but, but it's, it's a space that we can all move around and, and, and roam around freely. So I think right now this idea of, of oh, the office is going to disappear or, or our institutions are going to disappear because COVID is going to change it. Uh, is a bit of a hype job um, that, that's occurring. And, and, and again, there's a reason that, that it's a hype job that's occurring because it's a scary time. But this idea of the office transitioning into you can work from home, you can work from the coffee shop, you can work from anywhere because it's truly open was already occurring. Um, th this, isn't, this isn't like this revolutionary idea that, that, oh, I don't have to work in the office. What am I going to do? Because I've never done that before. You, you were probably already doing it to some extent. Not as severe as you're doing it right now, obviously, but but this transition was beginning to occur. So it's it, to me personally, I don't feel like it's that scary of a thing. If if I start to look at projects that we've designed, and I'm going to show pretty pictures, which which you can always blame architects for for getting too into their pretty pictures. But I've tried to make these extremely relevant and not 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 showy and flashy. And, and what I've done is I, I've I've approached this from the high level, and I'm going to start coming down into someone's space. But this is a project we just finished recently in Irvine. And the whole premise for this job was, let's create a campus where people can work outside. They don't have to work in their office. Um, so, so a lot of energy and a lot of design really went into how do we make spaces that actually pull people outside, pull them away from their office as it stands, um, 
and, and, and make it more of a communal experience, right? So if you start to think about when people ask me wh wh what's going to happen after COVID, uh, I, I, my response is, look, a, a lot of what we were doing already is what's going to happen because we're going to start to create these open outdoor spaces um, that, that, you know, you have the natural air, you're not tied to a desk, you can work here, you can work from home, you can work from the office. Um, that's what's going to happen. What we were already doing is beginning to happen. So, so this is this is a good example of what I would think uh, post COVID, you're going to start to see a lot more of uh, in your built environments. If, if and, and that's holistically from the outside, right? Like if we start going inside, this is a project we're working on um, where this is someone's lobby. So this this is is a rendering uh, pre COVID. So you can see that the social distancing isn't what it should be. But but I still wanted to show it because this is something that's still happening. Um, and these ideas are still being implemented and, and, and the clients really want to go in this direction where, again, you're starting to yank people out of being at their workstation and putting them in a space that starts to feel more like a library, right? The whole idea is that you, you attract uh, the young up and comers who are coming out of school, who are used to working in libraries, who are used to being a lot more mobile. Um, so that was already being implemented in a lot of our designs. And if we start to think about the, the office itself. This is someone's office where we were starting to craft and, and customize uh, these communal spaces where they could all work, where they could all gather, where, where they could all hang out. But again, that idea of, of, of removing people from this really strict regimented system, um, I think, I don't think I know was already occurring, not just in the office space, but just globally across our, our lives based on what technology was allowing us to do. Um, so personally, uh, I, I see all of this. Um, there's a lot to worry about, uh, but there, but there's also, we, I think we're all geared as, as design professionals to solve issues and we've been solving those issues and, and moving forward. So great. That's a, that sounds good, Carlos. That's, that's extremely positive, but COVID is still happening. Um, what are we going to do about it? Where are we headed in the future? All valid questions. I just kind of wanted to give a primer for, for, for a lot of my thinking, and 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 uh, I think just because I, I don't think I personally hear it enough to to have people stop for a second, reflect on what's happening. It's 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 bad. I'm not going to lie, obviously, but but I don't think it's 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 cause for the alarm that I think we're all experiencing. Where 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 we think tomorrow is 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 just a nightmare. It's it's really not that. Um, so let, let's talk about um, how are things happening, right? I talked a lot about the past, um, but let's talk about where where I, I, I think we are at the current moment and, and where I think we'll trend towards as we move forward. So we're at a point, I think, where the, we're at a bit of a paradox, right? If, if I sit down with one of our clients and discuss with them their new office space, uh, they, they're going to tell me, well, what, what do I need an office space for? Um, I could save money on that office space and it's, 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 I can make more money if I don't have an office space and make people work from their homes. I can also tell that same client who's, who's giving me that point of view, I, I think you should put a fitness center in your space. I think you should, you should make sure that um, there's a cafeteria or, or a nice pantry uh, in your space. And I think that's gonna make you uh, more money. I think both of us are right. Uh, at this moment in time, right? So, so it, you, you got to start to think about uh, on a cultural basis and on a, on a where do we want the future to go basis, which of these directions makes the most sense for you? And, and, and like everything in life, there's, there's a million grays here, right? It's, it's not a black or white decision, um, but we are in a moment in time where both of those statements, I, I, I want people to work from home because I can make more, uh, more money uh, I, I think you should actually add more cool stuff to your space. And I, th I think that's going to make you more money or actually true. Um, I obviously land on the side of, of, of these cultural institutions that we've built over time. Uh, I, I think it, it makes sense as a society to, to, to let those evolve and let those move, but, but, but not tear them down completely in a reactionary fashion because something happened this year that, that, that we couldn't really foresee or control properly. I, I, I don't think that's the way to go. Um, and I think uh, a lot of data starting to, to, to side with, with me on my stance. Uh, this, this bar chart is, I think it's about a month old at this point. Um, 
but but it's at CBRE who who I'm sure most people on the call know. Uh, we all know they're global. We all we all know their range. Uh, we all know their research. Uh, did a study that was reported in in the Wall Street Journal um, that talked about where people are right now with their office space. And, and in America, 25% of, of the workforce are now working back in their office. Right now, it's, I know that's a general big, broad uh, uh, stroke. And, and some of you can say, well, that I, I don't see that. Some of you can say, yeah, I see that. Um, and, and it's just based on location and, 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 and the nuances of where you live, right? So for instance, Dallas is at 40% back, which, which it, I mean, if you pause for a second and think about this, we don't have a vaccine for uh for COVID yet uh, we're in a pandemic um we we know that that rates are, are, are rising from some of the data that we see yet in in one location in our country 40 percent of people are working back in the office and i think there's a reason for that uh in the in, in the los angeles market we're at 32 ish percent new york to be expected is a lot lower they they, they rely heavily on mass transit um, they were really beat up at the beginning of this. So, so it, it, it makes total sense. Uh, and if you think about San Francisco being at 15%, again, it makes sense just based on culturally what that place is about. Um, they're very tech driven. A lot of these work from home initiatives were already in place uh, with companies there. So I think they've been a lot more nimble and a lot more able to, uh, to adjust to what's happening and, and, and keep things moving and almost uh, put put in fast forward motion what what they were already starting to play with and tinker with before. That's their industry. They like to, to tinker and mess around with things. So it totally makes sense that they're at 15. But if we look across the board and we say 25% uh, of our nation, people are going back to the office, uh, you, you could be the cynic and say, sure, people are stubborn, they're, they're stuck in their old ways. Um, or you could be uh, the person that looks at it more from, a, from an optimistic perspective and, and you can say there's a reason for that. Uh, uh, there's something about working around people, being around people, communicating with people in, in a live fashion uh, that's a benefit to, to how we interact. Um, I, I think another, uh, I, I just read this, this data yesterday and it's Brookfield. And, and, the, and they're saying uh, that in, in Korea, 90% of their buildings are back to, to being occupied. And, and that's just based on the fact that I think they've handled the, the COVID situation a lot better. Um, but if you think about 90% going back to the office, uh, I don't know that we'll ever be there, but, but again, it just speaks to me to, to what, what this, this institution of, of, of our office place really provides for people in a certain way. So when you start to, I, I've had these conversations multiple times now with, with a lot of our clients, uh, why would we go back? Is, is, a, is a pretty important question. Um, so, so I'm gonna try and answer what I think some of the benefits are uh, to the office space. First one is, is communication. Um, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm a pretty tech savvy guy and, and, and I, I love technology and, and all, everything that it's about. I, I, I've been using uh, uh, video conferencing and, and showing a lot of my projects and, and in go to meeting. Uh, now I use Zoom a lot. I, I've been doing that for, for, for 10 plus years. So, so I'm definitely not a Luddite that, that's anti technology, uh, not by any stretch of the imagination. But, but I do believe uh, there is a, a communication when, you're, when you do it face to face is, is a lot easier. I, I think it's, it's in our DNA. I think you can do it the other way. I'm not saying that you can't, but I think there's definite benefits to being able to work around people and build relationships and overhear what, what some of my coworkers are doing just kind of in an offhanded way. There, there's no denying that there's benefits to that. Um, the flip side is that there's distractions, obviously, that, that could prevent work. But I think it's a balancing act, right? I, I, again, this reaction of, okay, I'm going to work from home all the time now, uh, I think some companies could do. I think those companies eventually will find that that may have been a mistake. Um, and something that they have to to manage afterwards. Um, so, so if I think about, you know, what, why would I go back, right? If someone asked me that, uh, I think one of my first reactions is is communication. Um, how how do you communicate with your employees now? Uh, uh, how do you understand who they are as people beyond just talking to them specifically about 
uh, uh, job uh, specific items versus understanding what they did over the weekend, what they're doing next summer. Um, that those moments of really understanding who we are as people, uh, I think really starts to get diminished. I'm not saying it disappears, but, but there is a, a pretty substantial diminishing um, effect that, that happens in that, that I think uh, has an adverse effect on, on what it means to run a business. If I think about item two, um, I think about mentoring and employee growth. Um, I, I, and, and this, uh, if I could allude to, to the, to the uh, education environment, I, I see it uh, day in and day out with, with my wife. I see her um, sitting at, at, at her table, trying to manage 32 kids, um, and it's, it is tough. Uh, it, it's, I, I do not envy the position that she's currently in. Um, I, I overhear these conversations where most of her time is based on, no, no, don't put it there. You have to put it in this box over here. Uh, no, your homework is, isn't located there. It's, it's actually over here. And, and to be quite honest, I've, I've seen the system that she uses and it's, uh, it, it's, it's not bad. Uh, I mean, it's, it's actually kind of impressive, uh, the system and the organizational aspects of it. But, but because she's not there with her students, she, she spends so much of her time um, trying to explain to them what to do versus mentoring them that, that I, I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's a travesty. And not, and not, I know that sounds melodramatic, but it's really not. You're, you're trying to manage 32 kids. Each of them is telling you that, that they sent you an email and, and only, only four of them did. A lot of your energy gets, gets put in the wrong place. Um, I think in the in in the in the private world or in the in the world where we we live in in businesses, it's it's really hard to groom our young staff when we don't interact with them. Um, it's really hard to understand who, who our next leaders are uh, when we don't have like true access to them. Right? I, I think uh, I think the world runs on more than just the textbook knowledge and 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 like being smart. There, there's a lot of personal and social cues that you pick up when you interact with people. Um, and, and there's a lot of moments where you see people that are younger than you uh, uh, do things that you wouldn't really recommend or that you may have done them yourself at some point. Um, and you know they're an error. Uh, so so I, I think the mentoring aspect of, of growing companies for what they're going to become in the future uh, is, is extremely compromised uh, when we deal with the way we're dealing right now. Right. Um, so so I, I think that part of the business world and, and education and society as a whole starts to suffer when we rely solely on these means. These means are great, um, but they're a supplement also. I think time management. Right. Like it, it's interesting because, again, I'll use my wife as an example. Uh, I, I've, I've never been great at time management and, and work has always overwhelmed my life. That that's that's just how I've always been made up. But 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 she hasn't, uh, and I I always like her weekends were weekends, uh, and her nights were nights, and and I always envied that. Um, but because she's been thrown into this this new virtual world, uh, she's reading emails like I used to read emails. Uh, so it's like seven o'clock at night, and I hear her like saying, oh, "This student, like, how many times am I going to tell him uh, not to do this?" So it's overwhelmed her life because it's it's in our homes now. So so that distinction isn't there. And anyone that tells you burnout doesn't cost money, uh, either doesn't know what they're talking about or uh, doesn't really understand the business world because replacing people, like their, their efficiency, like, like people not being happy working is not a good thing. Um, and it's really hard to help young people, especially uh, who, who I personally work with, understand where the boundaries are when they're not in, in the environment for me to help guide them. So. Uh, I, I think that's a, that's a key point, but, but in my mind, the, the biggest issue is, is company culture. Um, <clears throat> this is from a Forbes, Forbes article, and, and I hate reading quotes in presentations, but, but just bear with me. Uh, company culture is an integral part of business. It affects nearly every aspect of a company from recruiting top talent, improving employee satisfaction. It's the backbone of a happy workforce. Uh, Happy workforce to me being uh, the, the 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 key part of this of this statement, right? Because it's you can replace workforce with schools, you can replace uh, uh, work workforce with uh, with with personal relationships. You can replace it, it. It applies across the board, right? Um, and I think uh, if if we think about it from a company perspective, uh, 
there, there's a stat that's that that was that was based off of a study that was done that says 94 percent of execs and 88 percent of employees uh, believe that a distinct corporate culture uh, is is one of the, the main pillars of, of of a successful business right and again I'm, I'm, I'm the tech guy that, that loves all of this stuff. Um, I don't think you can get a culture uh, uh, brewing and a culture moving when, when we're this uh, uh, unattached from each other, right? When, when the only time I'm talking to you is for a very specific item um, that I need from you and we'll talk about it and then we'll move on. I, I, I think creating company cultures can't really uh, exist in that realm. There are things you can do to mitigate it, right? However, um, I, I just don't think that company cultures, the way we were trending before this, if we talk about February and, and that, that quote that I gave you uh, from Fast Company earlier in the presentation, I mean, uh, we were headed to a place where, where the office was an experience. You know, it, it's sure you worked there and you made money there, uh, but it was an experience. And, 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 and the result of that being an experience meant that you had a happy workforce <laughs> you know people were happy they enjoyed coming to the office i, I think the fine tuning that was occurring was was quite incredible um and and i found this that I, I was reading a random article um and, and i know it's going to sound like I'm, I'm cherry picking um particular items to to talk about here in particular stats and, and i get that um but it was based on social media. It, it was a, a survey by Cigna and it talked about loneliness, people's feeling of loneliness, um, which, which I thought was extremely relevant uh, to, the, to, the time, to the time we're living in right now. And, and, and the, the survey, which I can't remember the quantity of people, but it was an insane amount of people, uh, like Cig Cigna would be the only one to be able to do this kind of survey. It, it stated that if you're a heavy social media user, you're 71% uh, more likely to feel lonely um, than say a light social media user, which is which which was only hovering around 51%. Um, so so I, I, it makes sense. I think at this point we've all seen the social dilemma on uh, on Netflix and uh, and have a pretty keen understanding of of some of the nuances of this. If you haven't seen it, I would recommend watching it. Um, but I I just found it, it kind of stopped me cold because. Uh, I started to think about this in terms of what we're living in now, right? Um, and if you think about heavy social media users, uh, uh, to me, that's probably someone that has like 600 plus friends, quote unquote, friends on Facebook, right? They still feel unattached. They, they still feel uh, disassociated. Uh, they still feel lonely. Um, yet you have this device that's meant to connect you with people so, so that you don't have that happen. Um, so, so it, it, it just, it was one of those moments where it's obvious, but it was still an aha moment where it's like, that, that's what's happening right now uh, in our world because we've been removed physically from being able to interact from people across the, the board globally. Uh, and now we're trying to, to have these devices and these moments kind of give us what we've lost. Um, now, again, I'm not saying that these devices and, and these interactions are bad. I actually think they're incredible and I, and, and I love them. Um, but but I don't think that the reaction that I was talking about earlier, where we we can all think, okay, uh, I love working from home. This is what I'm going to do from now on. I, I it's 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 just not going to work, right? Uh, I mean, it's a bold statement for be, for me to be that black and white. Um, but I, I do think that social media is is a pretty good gauge to start to inform uh, us as a society what starts to happen when we solely rely on 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 these relationships that that don't have. The, the physical uh, presence that that we've been used to that that's that we've we've uh, evolved into you know that that's what's part of our DNA um, so I, I think some of these reasons uh, make the office uh, still relevant make the, the education environment relevant make, make uh, still shopping going going to shopping districts relevant right like the cultural experience you know the, the sense of communication uh, the ability to mentor people and, and help groom them be better people right uh, I think it's absolutely critical, and, and, and I think it does help the office uh, uh, environment, um, which ultimately helps society at the end of the day. Um, so again, a, another pause in, in this, this presentation, if you will. Um, things have changed. <laughs> okay, Carlos, I, I understand everything you're telling me, but, but things have changed. What are we doing? Uh, where are we going to head? And I, and I think 
this has all happened um, in phases, uh, and it's to be expected. Right? I, I think the first phase was was disbelief. Um, then we kind of went into a panic mode, you know, like, oh my God, like, I, like, how am I going to pay for rent? How am I, how am I going to go shopping when I can't even go out? Um, but then we started to go into reaction mode. And what I'm going to show you here, I think, is, is just a quick snapshot of reaction mode. And then I'll, I'll, I'll talk a bit about the, what I consider to be the future. Um, so in, in the, in the uh, office sector, the first, the, when, when we got out of all the, all the craziness of, I cannot believe what is happening, uh, we moved into reaction mode and, and internally Walcott uh, started an initiative called homework and, and the whole basis for homework was that um, we want to help our clients and, and, and companies still be able to function right because it's it's I mean we need to do that so that we can all survive here um, so what we wanted to do was take a look at how do we help people that are currently uh, unable to go to the office how do we help them still be efficient and work from home and we started to look at how we how we design people's existing homes uh, to still have a bit of an office environment where they could they could concentrate, where they could do work, where they could be efficient. We we also started, and, and I, I I won't show any of that imagery because it's it's people's homes, obviously. But what what I can show a little bit of is is we did the same thing for the office. So you currently have these office spaces, and we need to do something so that these office spaces can function in this in this new world we're going to live in. Um, so what you see here is a sample package that we, we essentially did for ourselves. We talked about de-densification, which was huge because densification was such a, such a prevalent uh, 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 direction that we were all headed in. We started to look at how, how people interact, right? How we, how we locate workstations with each other. We started to look at existing floor plans, right? Like if you look at this floor plan, this is our downtown office where, where I'm actually uh, coming to you from now. Uh, you can see how dense it is, right? There's a lot of chairs there uh, and we had a lot of people. And again, like the energy for us and, and the communication was great, um, but that really didn't work uh, anymore, right? For the foreseeable future at the moment. So we have a vaccine and can actually start to, to move things back to where we were. So we, we had to take the floor plan and then create and take away from spaces that we had generated before so that we could, we could manage the social distancing aspect of it. We can manage the circulation aspect of it. Uh, we can manage how many people we had in the office at, at one time. And, and this, this to me is, is what I'd call the passive solution. And, and passive, I mean that we design and people interact a certain way with it versus like hardcore technology, which, which I uh, term is active, right? It, it's, it's like something that's actually doing something. We really focused on, on these passive solutions. Um, and, then, and I think a lot of the people on this call are the ones that are coming up with these great uh, uh, technologies that are going to even propel us further and, and make things better. But again, this is all reactionary. Um, we looked at, okay, so our square foot count just increased. Uh, we had 130 people, 130 square feet per person. Now it's at 180, right? Our, our meeting spaces got absorbed into, uh, in, in, into personal spaces for people, right? So there's all of these metrics and then how we interact with the space, uh, and, and the physical things that we create to, 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 to really push us forward um, that I think we're starting to pull away from. That, that exercise is still occurring because people are still going back, but a lot of it has occurred. Um, and, and what I'm most excited about now is, is obviously the future. So, so this little sketch I did here talks about uh, if, if you envision this person standing in the center, think of, think of that as, as the client or think of it as yourself or, or someone you know. Um, there's, there's certain paths we can take here, right? There's the past, um, which we did things a certain way. Um, there's today, which is we're still reacting because we don't have all the answers. And then there's the future. Where, where are we headed with the future? And, and, and I'm happy to say that, that a lot of our clients that we're interacting with now are purely talking about the future. Um, uh, it's interesting because when we first started this, uh, I would go into these rooms and it, with, these, with these, <laughs> these virtual rooms and start talking about their new office spaces. And we would talk about uh, COVID, like, uh, do we need a plexiglass? You know, do we need to push people six feet apart? Um, like the, the circulation means like our, our, our filtering system. All of those were the conversations that I thought, you know, like the, the person on the, other, on the other side of the screen is gonna wanna talk about. And, and I, I'm, I'm so happy that, that, that like nine times out of 10, it was, I get it. Uh, that's where we are today and I appreciate that. 
but but let's plan for the future. Where are we headed f uh, five years from now? I, I don't want to know what we're doing the next six months. Um, and it kind of gives you hope, right? Because because it allows you to to start thinking beyond where we're in, where we are in this current moment, um, and propelling ourselves to the future, right? So, I, I didn't want to whip out on you guys and 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 leave this in in vagueness, right? I, I I'm already at, a, at an extremely high level and not talking about uh, particular. So. Uh, I, I wanted to, to, to bring out the crystal ball for a second and to think about where's the office headed. And as someone that works in, 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 in this world, um, what do I think based on experience, based on what I'm seeing, based on these conversations I'm having with a lot of clients, um, where do I see some of these things headed? So, so I'm going to give you points. I'll, I'll, the disclaimer here is that this unfortunately is being recorded, right? So, uh, so, so people can, can show this to me later and tell me how wrong I was. Um, but I do think that some of these things are going to be uh, things that happen. I, I think one of the first things is this idea that people are going to work from home all the time is, is not true. Um, this idea that people are going to go back to the office just like they did before, also not true in my, in my perspective. Uh, what I anticipate happening is this hybrid that, that we've all heard about it. This, I'm not uh, saying something or shattering here. Um, but this hybrid where people now start to choose where they work from, when they work from it. And I think there's going to be a really nice melding of, of companies and their employees and, and figuring out what's right for each individual. Um, so this, this, this idea of working from home is, is going to happen. Um, but but I, I, think, I think what's a little misleading at the moment is that, that all, all we've done at the moment is we've, we've swapped out the office for our home. And and I think where where we're gonna where we're gonna go and where we were trending was that it's it's not it's not one of these two places it's it's a myriad of places, um, so so I think that's what's gonna happen. I think there's gonna be a hybrid approach. I, I think it's not gonna be uncommon for for in in our our conversations for people to say oh that's my that's my home day. Um, I think that's gonna become part of our our day to day. I think this idea of rotating workforce. Um, is gonna is gonna be another thing. Th this one's interesting because it has it has some potential pitfalls of of creating these these clusters of people that know each other well where others don't. Uh, so I think the HR departments are gonna have a fun time with this one. Um, but I do think this is this is something that that we should all expect. And and I, I've started to see. And I don't see this going away because there there are a, quite a bit of benefits to to operating in this capacity where where you work from home some days. Um, you work at the office, others, you, 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 you're swapping desks with other people. Um, there's a bit less of a footprint requirement. It could be argued, uh, could be argued that it's not going to change at all because people require more space, but, but this rotating, uh, workforce is one. And I, I don't personally, uh, see this happening in schools. Um, it was proposed to, to us with, with my daughter, um, I, I think schools really need to be, uh, uh, people need to be in schools is, is my perspective, especially K through 12. Um, in, at the university level, it's a different story. Um, I, I think from our design, uh, this idea of flex space, uh, this idea of smaller offices, this idea of actually enclosed spaces that, that are filtered properly is, is, is a gimme. That's gonna happen. It was already happening. It's gonna get cranked up more. We've actually started designing office spaces and adding smaller offices to them so that people can use them for an office. You could use them for a huddle room. Um, th they'll find quite a bit of different uses for these type of spaces. But, but office space where we were training, where everything was open, um, I, I think we're gonna, there's gonna be kind of a compromise now where we start to go back to more enclosed spaces so people feel a lot more comfortable. Um, and there are true benefits to this that extend way beyond uh, just COVID and where we are. This, this one, I don't have to tell you just based on how we're communicating today or how I'm communicating. I'm, I'm on a soliloquy here for, for 45 minutes now, but uh, uh, the mass adoption of, of video conferencing is, 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 it was already happening. I think that the, the genie's out of the bottle now. All of the clients that I've, that I've dealt with who didn't know how to interact with Zoom or GoTo now expect it. Um, I expect conference rooms. I expect offices. Uh, uh, I, I expect there to be video conferencing capabilities throughout spaces because we, we've all seen how how it, it's been our lifeline. <laughs> you know, like it's it's it truly uh, functions 
like it was meant to function. And I, and I think it's saved us. Uh, you know, I, I have an interest, I've had conversations with people where, could you imagine if this had happened like 15 to 20 years ago? Uh, it, it would, how would we have communicated? How have we, how would we have run this, this country? Um, it, so, so this technology, uh, uh, I think we're all blessed to, that it exists. We're all blessed that, that companies like Netflix started requiring us to really increase our, our internet speeds and, and our bandwidth um, because this truly functioned and it'll continue to function. And I think it's only going to get better. Um, and I think uh, I, I, I briefly talked about this, but elbow room, I, I kid you not, some of, some of the floor plans we were doing before this were so incredibly dense that uh, that even I think we were being a little we were getting a little uncomfortable with it. Like these people are really stacked closely together. Uh, I, and, and if you look at the trend, you know, um, th these numbers can always be debated and it's always based on, on specific function of, of people. But it just if, if you look at these on a ratio basis in, in 2010, we were at 20, 225 square foot per person. 2012, it, it dropped down to 176. And, and before this, we were like at 150. Um, so I, I think what's going to happen is that people are going to get their space back. People are already wanting their space back to a certain extent. Um, and you're not going to be able to start densifying as much before uh, as before. I, I think uh, that this one may get thrown in my face if, if I'm wrong um, here in the coming months. But but I'm of the opinion that this is where things are trending. Um, and, and then the, 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 the final thing that, that I'll, I'll say that I think is happening uh, is that uh, design expresses uh, our culture and where we are, right? Like our spaces have always done that. All, all, all of the architectural monuments that we've seen have, have always reflected where society is uh, as a whole um, and, and our aspirations and the things we wanted to do. Uh, I, I think we're, we've, we've hit a moment here now uh, about to come on November where we, we, we've all started to stop and reflect and analyze and stop. We, we've stopped reacting, right? I think, I think, and I think it didn't happen right now. I think it's, it's been like a month or two where, where I've seen the tone totally change that um, I, I think uh, the thoughtfulness of how we go about doing things is, is going to uh, fundamentally change and, and, and for the better. Um, I think as we design spaces, uh, mental and physical health is, is something that, that everyone's going to want to um, want incorporated and want thought through and, and, and want a strategy for, right? It's not just build as quickly as you can and let's move on. I, I think this moment in time has really forced us to stop and think about these things. I think uh, conversations about air quality, right? This, this, we, we dodged a couple of bullets um, uh, with, with, with a pandemic type scenario uh, in the past, but, but it, it finally did hit. So, you know, MERV 13 filters, like the bipolar ionizing filters, like uh, uh, how, how we do air exchanges, all, all of that stuff is, is gonna be commonplace at this point. And, and it's not just gonna be our mechanical engineer that, that cares about this. Um, and, and the people, like one or two people in the office, I think it's gonna be a little more global. Um, so we're gonna have to be a lot more thoughtful about that. Um, and I think what's going to happen is that uh, people are really going to focus on things that are important, right? Like it's, it's, it's an interesting moment in time where we, 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 we all had habits and we all had a certain way of doing things. And, and even if we didn't want to do them that way, uh, society as a whole pushed us that way. And it was like, you just fell in sync with, with, with the nine to five, with the five days a week, with, uh, you know, like two weeks of vacation, uh, uh, all of that, um, it was kind of forced upon us. I, I think if we all thought about it differently, we'd all have our own approaches. And I think that uh, because we've been able to stop and, and, and been forced to, to, to reanalyze and restructure and do things in a, in a totally different way by force, um, I think what's ultimately going to happen is that, that people are going to just be more thoughtful as a whole and, and, and less likely just to follow a, a system or just because it's there. Um, so I, I I, I take that as a huge positive, uh, and and I, I think uh, as society it, it helps us move forward and think about things differently, which which is always a good thing, right? It, it's it's always good to stop, relook, reanalyze, and then redeploy kind of kind of moment. So um, so I think that's that's where we are as a society, and those are the things that are changing. So 
Um, again, I, I, I gave you guys the disclaimer before this. My, my presentation was going to be a, a lot more uh, high level and 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 in, in a different place than than the than the tactical uh, uh, presentations that I think you're getting based on, on what I saw before. So, so I, I hope I didn't bore you to death during your 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 lunch time here. Uh, and, and thank you for having me. Carlos, quite the opposite. Um, I found that fascinating, and I wish you kind of. I wish we could only get more. Um, I'm sure I'm speaking for many of the people here. There have been a number of questions, comments, like, "How did you do? Just you know, the program. What did you use to uh, to mm -hmm. deliver yeah. your presentation?" But it was. It, not only was this an insightful, thoughtful, uh, thought-provoking presentation, but I, 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 I think your presentation itself was a work of art. And I feel uh, privileged to, uh, to have my, if my brain was on a functional MRI right now, it'd be brightly lit up. Um, and uh, maybe we'll start a salon with you as the, uh, as the, as the, as the centerpiece of that. Uh, we have two minutes left. Unfortunately, we don't have a, a ton of time, but I, there are a couple questions and I will try to just cherry pick um, from a, Greg Kamiyatsu, uh, what about the whole new generation of kids who seem to be more comfortable interacting online rather than interacting in person? What's your take on that generational thing? I, I, I do believe that, uh, that those, that, that my daughter, right? Again, I have a 12 year old, so I'll speak from experience here. They're more adept at it. Like me personally, um, because I've always been this tech guy, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I've been speaking with my mother through FaceTime and forcing her to do it for some time now. And it, and it, 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 it made me not have to drive to Phoenix to, to see her because I, I did get those interactions. Uh, so so I, I think there's a place for both and I think both will happen. But, but, but I think that's why I put the Cygna stat, right? Because sure, sure we, we know how to operate technology. Sure, we're really good at it. Sure, we have 500, you know, 600 friends on Facebook. Uh, sure, we can get on Facebook and like spend like 30 minutes like just answering people's questions, um, but people are still lonely, right? And and it's because there's a, there's a detachment, uh, and and there's there's a loss of physicality that 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 I think we as humans just inherently have. So so I, I do think that that um, people will be more adept at creating and fostering these relationships uh, virtually, um, but but I, I still don't think that you can have the pure disconnect and, and, and just do one or just do the other. I, I think it'll be a bit of both.